Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new video at Beyond the Club. Today, we are going to discuss about GitHub Actions and its integration uh, with AWS Cloud Environment. First of all, uh, what is the use case and how we do it? Uh, the use case uh, is to deploy the AWS uh, resources uh, and do it for free. Uh, GitHub Actions are free. Uh, we can also use it uh, by AWS native services, uh, but that will incur some costs. Uh, hold on, we have another video for that. Uh, so let's come to the how part. Uh, so I have made very easy uh, in this video uh, as a first steps uh, towards the GitHub Actions. Uh, we will provide our GitHub Action uh, with an IAM user access key uh, and a secret key, uh, which will have a trust relationship with a role uh, which will be needed for our deployment. After the role verification done, uh, it will provide GitHub one session uh, which we will use later uh, for our resource deployment. Uh, we will use a CDK here to deploy infrastructure as code. Uh, now remember, uh, as I already said, uh, this is the starting point. Uh, this is the process to know how GitHub Action works. This is simple process to deploy infrastructure, but it's not secured. Why? Imagine the following scenario. Uh, you set up your GitHub Actions in your repository. Uh, and it's all cool uh, until you want to access uh, your cloud provider resource. Now you might be tempted to create an access key and secret key, uh, place it in your secret repository and forget about it. However, this can be drawbacks. Uh, for example, your credentials could get lit without your knowledge and your AWS account could be accessed by a third parties. Additionally, you probably haven't thought about uh, how to rotate these credentials. So you might ask yourselves, isn't there a better way to access your cloud resources uh, without storing these credentials anywhere? Uh, well, there is a way. Uh, GitHub announced the possibility to get rid of this kind of credentials. Instead, uh, you can configure your GitHub actions uh, so that an open ID connect uh, JSON web token uh, is generated by GitHub while your workflow runs. Uh, in your cloud provider, you can register GitHub uh, as an identity provider. Uh, this way, the JSON web token, we call it a JWT, uh, generated by GitHub is allowed to access your cloud accounts. As I said, uh, we will make this video very simple uh, using access key and secret key. But if you want to know more about this uh, OpenID Connect or YDC, uh, let me know in the comment section. I will make another video uh, using this JWT token or the JSON web token. Uh, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and give your thoughts about it. Uh, so now let's go and check out the tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial of AWS CDK with GitHub Actions. I have made this part very short. We will give an overview of the whole tutorial here uh, and then move to the main part of the tutorial where we will build up everything from scratch and deploy. So let's start. So we will build up AWS resources uh, with AWS CDK. And we will use Python as a programming language to build that app. You can choose any programming language as per your choice. Lastly, we will deploy the whole infrastructure as code uh, with the help of GitHub Actions. To follow through this video, uh, you have to have an AWS account, a GitHub account. Uh, you need to install AWS CDK as well along with Python. The main core concept uh, is like this in the architecture diagram, where we have two environments uh, which mainly will interact with each other. On one hand, uh, we have GitHub environment. On the other hand, we have our AWS account where the resources will be deployed. First, we have to create, uh, so let's talk about the AWS account first. First, we have to create one AWS IAM user and inject the AWS access key and secret access key to the user to our GitHub repo. The user must have assume role and tag session permissions over the role that we will create. Now let's come to the role. This role will be used for deployment. This one also we have to create. I have used administrative policy uh, for this role to make it very simple right now. But in production, remember, 
to give as as less permission possible as to the role if you want i can give fine tune permissions let me know in the comment section otherwise you can go you can also go through either the cloud formation events that it will trigger and also the cloud trail events uh, that it will trigger uh, to fine tune this particular role very important then we will create one github action plan so i have created a github action plan of my own uh, and we will go through it in detail so what is github action plan uh, is that it is kind of combination of actions uh, that it will do uh, when we will trigger the github action when we trigger the github action it will take the secret key and aws access key of that particular user and try to log in to this particular aws account remember this part of the job will be done by the user that will be created then the user will be verified if it has a assume role policy over the role that we will create if it has the correct policy the role will then return a session uh, to our github very important things to remember here uh, is that the role must have a trust policy configured uh, with github and allow the im user to assume this role on the other hand the user also must have the permission to assume this role as well like as always uh, aws won't allow if either of these two missing after we get the session token github will install the required dependency for this project as this is a python project um, we will install python related dependency next it will synthesize as per cdk procedure and create artifacts this artifacts will then be moved to aws accounts over the session that has been returned previously cdk will create the cloud formation template and deploy the resources uh, in the aws account and last we will destroy all the resources that have been created so this is the theory part and overall the concept now let's move on and see everything happening in real time so to follow through this tutorial um, i have separated our whole work uh, in couple of steps so this is the small steps uh, that we will be doing uh, throughout this tutorial and when one step will be done uh, we will uh, remove this crossbar and so that it will be done so the steps is like um, uh, first of all we have to create a repository and then we have to clone the repository uh, in our local and then we have to remove the unwanted files from the repository from our local because cdk init will not work if there are some files in our repository then we have to push the code to git uh, and then we will create aws role uh, aws im user as well uh, we have to configure the secret key and access key for that particular aws im user to our github we have to give the role the per particular permissions we have to give users the permission uh, we have to create a github actions uh, this is where the main uh, things will happen uh, then we have to change we will change the code uh, for deployment suppose we will write one lambda function for deployment or one s3 bucket for deployment then we will push the code then we will run our github actions manually and then we will run on github our github action on push to our main branch which is automatic and then we will destroy the resources so this is the overall steps right now nothing is done uh, so let's go back to our first step and create the repository so i am in my github repository and to create a new repository we have to give the name of the repository that we want so i will give cdk uh, maybe github then i don't need description right now i will make it as private and i don't need any readme file i don't need anything git ignore and license i will not give anything right now to make it a empty repository i will create this repository so this is our empty repository right now it has nothing so if you see code there is nothing in it now we will clone this repository to clone it we have to copy this one this url and we have to go to our terminal and we have to get give command this and then enter so you see uh, it has been shown like you appear to have cloned an empty repository so this is what we want so let's see 
let's go inside this uh, project. So we are inside our project where we will be initializing our CDK uh, project. So to initialize a CDK project, uh, we have this command. CDK init application, uh, we need one application and the language will be Python, then enter. Okay, uh, CDK initialization has been done and AWS has already provided a template application uh, for me and we can see it in our local repository. So we will go back uh, to our uh, PowerPoint and check what has been done till now. So we come here. Uh, so we have created one repository. This is done. And we have cloned the repository. Done. We have removed the unwanted file from the repository. Done. Uh, we have initialized the code uh, with CDK in it. That's also done. Now the next part is uh, push the raw code to Git. How do we do that? So right now, if we see here, if we give ls, uh, let me clear the screen and let me do ls. And we see that a basic CDK application has been uh, cloned from our um, uh, AWS repository, uh, which will do, I guess, nothing, uh, but only deploy one SQS queue that has already been defined and it is it has been commented out. So I don't think it will deploy anything at all right now. So this is the empty CDK project, uh, which will run, but deploy nothing. But we will not run and uh, run, run this one. Uh, what we will do, uh, we will go inside of it and then we will uh, push this one. So to push this code into GitHub, we have command. We have to add all the files first to, so for, to add everything. And then we have to commit. So we have added the files, we have committed now. Uh, let me clear the screen again. And then to push, we have git push. So we see that uh, all the files and folders from my local has been committed to master branch. So let's go check it out. In, in our git, uh, we have this master branch already committed. So we go into our keynote and we will check this out. Now the next step is to create AWS IAM role. Uh, so to create this particular role, uh, we have to create first one identity provider. So this identity provider uh, is related to our GitHub identity provider. So we need one URL and one assume role policy for that identity provider. Uh, we will see also this into action. So let's go into our AWS console and create the identity provider first. And from that identity provider, uh, we have to create the AWS role. Uh, let's go to AWS account now. I'm into my AWS management console and to create any kind of identity, we know we have to go to IAM and our IAM system is loading. Inside our IAM, we can see there is identity providers. We click on this and right now we will add a provider. So we will Pro, we will uh, create identity provider with OpenID Connect and we have to provide one URL. So we will go back to our keynote and we see that in our required nodes, we have this token. This token we will copy and, and we go back to our URL and we give this token. This is our token. This is our GitHub token specifically. And then the audience should be STS Amazon AWS.com. So this is our provider and this is our audience. So these two we will give here and probably we will add a tag uh, who is the owner and the owner is, uh, I think I have spelling mistake. Okay. Owner. And then we will give our channel name and we will add the provider. So right now my provider is added. What we will do now, we will create a role for this provider. We go to roles. We create a role. Uh, we select web identity. And in choose provider, uh, if we drop in the drop down, it is already coming as token.accentsgithubsecure.com. And the audience is also coming that stsamazon.com. And we will do nothing right now. And then next. So as I already shared, 
uh, I will give this role of administrative permission, but in production, do not give the role in administrative permission. Uh, filter out the less privileged role that it needs, uh, whether from CloudTrail or from CloudFormation. Let me know in the comment section if you want to know more uh, about the permissions or the less privileged permission about this particular role. Uh, I will update that in the description. So I will search for admin and our administrative access is this one and then next and the role name uh, I will give uh, github role maybe this is the simplest one and a tag so tag is ready and we will create the role we will verify so our github role is ready we go back to our keynote and check this one out so here uh, we have created the role now now the next part is to create the IAM user. So let's go back one more time into AWS console and create the user. So we are inside uh, AWS account again uh, under users. Uh, we will add users. The user name should be GitHub user. I don't need management console right now. We will give next. And let's, okay, let's do one thing. Let's uh, do nothing right now and click on next. And this is our username and maybe one tag, only the owner. And then we will just create the user first. So we see our user has been created, uh, but mm, we have to generate the access key and secret key for this user. And also we have to give the tag session permission to this particular user and assume one permission. So we go inside of this user and we will choose add permission or add inline policy. Inside inline policy, we will go directly uh, into the JSON and we go into our keynote where I have already written down the policy. So this will be our user policy. So what we will do is we will copy this one. Remember, this one have a role name. This we have to give the one that we have created right now. We will go back to IAM role, this role and copy the IAM of the role and paste it. Uh, so this is the role uh, that GitHub role that we have created. This is the ARN of it and the user uh, is have permission to assume and tag session uh, with this particular role. Uh, so we will review it. and we give one github user policy uh, maybe this role and then we will create the policy so we see the policy has been created and it has two uh, permission assume role and tag session over this particular role now we go back to our uh, we go back to our keynote and check this out as well. So our IAM user has been created. Now we have to configure AWS access key for this user. Uh, so go back to AWS management console and create some access key. So we are inside uh, this GitHub user and we inside security credentials. Currently we see uh, that. Uh, in access keys we don't have anything so we have to create one access key let's click create access key and uh, so we will choose third party services because uh, we will use github uh, for this one and i have to choose this one then next and description is not required and we have created the access key so for access key we will copy the access key and maybe in keynote here so we have generated our access key and secret key uh, for the user. Now let's go back to steps and this is uh, th this part is partly done. Okay, so the configuring AWS access key is not done. So where we will do it, we will do it in our GitHub repository. Uh, let's go back to our GitHub repository now and inside settings, we have secrets and variables and under actions we have secrets and variables right now there is nothing so we have to create one new secret and access keys 
secret. So our access key ID and secret access key ID has been configured for the user. So if we go back to our keynote, configuring AWS access key is currently done. Now uh, the next part is to give role permissions. So I think while creating that, uh, while while creation of the particular role, uh, we have already done that. We have already given the permission, but we did not give the trust relationship of that particular uh, role uh, to the user that we have created. So we have to give the trust uh, relationship uh, of that particular user here as well. So how do we do that? So to do that, uh, we have to add another part here in the statement and that one i have already con uh, i have already written down here uh, where we have to allow uh, the user the assume role and tag session permission so remember i have said that we have to give um, a two way uh, trust policy that the role uh, must uh, allow the user to uh, to assume this role for tagging sessions and everything also the user must have that HTS assume role and tag session as well from his end. What we will do is uh, we will generally copy this one. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay, uh, we will copy this one and go back to our console and we will edit our trust policy. And within this uh, statement, we will add another one. Now everything is fine. So we are also giving this particular user access to assume and tag session over this role now this is done and we will update the policy so the role policy is now updated and the user is now authenticated to use this assume role and tag session and from user perspective uh, this user has a permission to assume and tag session over this role so vice versa is completed so our role and user policy is completed we go back to our keynote and check this out as well so give role permission is done give user permission also done now we have to create github actions to create github actions i have already defined one template uh, and we will go through it uh, one by one in our next part this is my uh, action plan so uh, as i said if we check the uh, if we check the slide if you remember uh, so we have to create one github actions which have a couple of plans so what does it plan means so github will do this kind of actions within this plan so this plan we have to define uh, in a yaml template and we have to upload it so what does this plan consist so this i have uh, created by my own yeah, you can create of your own uh, if you don't need all these uh, plans or all these steps uh, you can remove uh, them but let's go through one by one and give a, a clear understanding what is going on so first of all we have to give a name the name for this plan is deploy aws cdk uh, that means uh, github will do uh, this action uh, when we will trigger uh, this plan so when we will trigger github action it will deploy aws cdk resources on what Right now I have uh, commented out the push branches. So if we want to trigger this action on push of master branch, uncomment it. And then if we want to do it manually right now, uh, we will just select workflow dispatch. I will do it both. Uh, right now I will do it manually. Then after that we will uh, just uncomment this and we will push it uh, to master branch and it will be deployed automatically. After that, it has the jobs. So the actions have jobs. What jobs it has? It has AWS CDK job. This is the job name. And then we have to select the version of the version of the platform, the platform version that we will use. Right now, Ubuntu uh, to uh, deploy uh, this CDK, to, de uh, um, uh, to install all the dependencies there, and then to create artifacts and then de uh, deploy. So we will uh, use Ubuntu, uh, the latest release, uh, and these are the steps. So I have a couple of steps uh, and as uh, I am uh, using Python, uh, so it will require a couple of steps. So the first step is to check out the action plan. Uh, it will check out the action plan, you know, this YAML file. Uh, we will create the action, then uh, you will understand what is going on there. Uh, then the next 
uh, step is to configure the AWS credentials. Uh, why should it do that? So if you remember this architecture diagram, whenever the action plan is triggered, whether manually or on the push event uh, or uh, on the main branch or the master branch, um, it will take the AWS access key and secret key and try to log into the AWS account. So this is the plan where it will configure the AWS credential and it will, if it will check if the user is able to log in to this particular account. Then it will select the region and this particular region it will deploy all my resources and then the very important part the user must assume a particular role uh, for deployment of all the resources. So you remember we have created this role so if we go to again our AWS console and check the role this is our role and this is the ARM github role. So this is the same thing that it is doing. So I have given the role, uh, the user will log in and assume this role and then the, and then the tag the session uh, with the role. So if we remember correctly, this particular user have a policy of STS tag session over the role. So this step will be completed. So if this step is completed, that means the user is authenticate, authenticated to use this account as well as assume this role and deploy resources on behalf of the role. I hope it is clear now. Uh, now comes the next part where it has couple of more steps uh, that, the that it will uh, do the actual job where uh, it will install NPM and then uh, the next dependency it will install is AWS CDK. Uh, the command is uh, sudo npm install minus g global uh, AWS CDK. Uh, so to install AWS CDK, we need NPM. That's why we have installed NPM first, then AWS CDK. After the AWS CDK is completed, then we need to install uh, the requirements uh, for this CDK project to build up. So to get an idea, let's go back to our GitHub console and let's check this folder out. So we will create one GitHub actions here in this repository. And in this repository, we have one CDK project. Uh, to properly work on this project, we need to install this requirement.txt uh, on the overall project. That means we need to install the uh, dependency for this CDK. So this is what it is doing and it is doing in the uh, current working directory. Then after installing all the dependency, we know the step. Uh, it will do CDK synth to synthesize and create the artifact. Uh, then uh, if it is for a uh, new account, this is very important. Uh, CDK bootstrap is required. If bootstrap, we do not do bootstrap, then it will fail. Uh, because for any new account, we have to bootstrap it first. After the bootstrapping is done, uh, we have to uh, deploy the resources. So this step uh, will deploy the resources and it will not uh, ask for any approval. Um, and it will also do it in the current directory. Uh, so this is what this does. And then we have another command called uh, CDK destroy. Uh, this will also uh, destroy each and everything that we have created. So right now I will not give that. So I will comment this out. Uh, basically, I want to show that after deploying, everything is working. Uh, then um, if everything is working, then on the last step, we will destroy the resources. So I hope the action plan is clear uh, to you. Uh, now we will create the action uh, into GitHub. So let's go to GitHub now. Uh, we are under the repository CDK GitHub that we are that we were working on. Uh, now we go to in this particular repository we go to actions to create actions uh, we have to uh, click on this one otherwise you can choose uh, any actions you want but I want to set it up myself so that's why I will choose set up a workflow yourself and then uh, in the uh, in the template itself it will create a main dot uh, yaml file for you and what we will do is uh, we will copy everything uh, from here and we will paste it. So this is my action plan and it will currently it will trigger manually. Uh, I will not trigger it on push uh, master branch, but um, uh, I, I, we will do it later. So this is my overall action plan. And what I will do is I will verify one more time the role. Uh, this is our account ID and this is our role. So uh, I hope I did not do any mistake in the spelling GitHub role. This is fine. And one more thing to here is that required approval. Okay, so this is my um, plan and I will start committing this one. So when we commit this, 
uh, you see thing here that it has a folder created called uh, github then workflows under workflows we have our main.yaml so whenever we will be triggering this action plan it will check out this main.yaml file uh, if you remember our steps uh, it will check out the main.action uh, file here and it will run all the uh, steps one by one right. so we will go back to our repository now uh, in this repository and also we will go back to our keynote uh, where this step is completed that create github action plan this step is completed we will mark this as done now here is the step called uh, change code for deployment but before this i want to show it that um, uh, empty cdk code or empty infrastructure can be run on our github action plan so this part of the code where we will uh, do some code changes and write down one lambda or create one bucket or sqs queue right now we will not do it uh, we will uh, just deploy one empty cdk project to our account and see that our github actions is currently working or not so how to do that so to do that it's very simple we have to go back to our uh, github repository and we have to click on actions right now you see there is there are no actions or no job currently running but we have one workflow that is defined deploy aws cdk and it has a workflow called workflow dispatch event trigger that means we have to trigger it manually so let's run it so we are in branch master and if we click on run workflow it will create a workflow for me uh, if we go back to all workflow uh, we see this one is created deploy aws cdk and under this workflow we have one job aws cdk and we have we will open this up now let's see what it does one by one so our job is completed and let's see what it did uh, so first of all let's go back to our yaml file and check it out so for the first step was to check out the file so it has set up everything here it has uh, the runner version is the, uh, there the operating system i hope it is ubuntu the latest version it ran and this is for setting up the job and then it check out the code uh, for github repository and also it take the action uh, file as well uh, so this is as it is that we have shown uh, then our next step was to configuring aws credentials so it configured the aws credentials and also uh, configuring it, it aws credential from the secret key and access key that we have set up in the our settings for this repository and then the next step was to install npm uh, so it has installed npm uh, here with these steps uh, this is a very big step i am not uh, i will not go through it um, entirely uh, then it installed aws cdk uh, so this one it installed aws cdk and then it uh, installed the requirement.txt uh, it has all the requirements mainly two requirements was there i think uh, cdk library and constructs uh, this they have installed and then cdk synth so it has done cdk synth which will actually create one uh, cloud formation template um, uh, for the resources that will be deployed but currently there is nothing to deploy uh, and then uh, it will do cdk bootstrap before deploying uh, so cdk bootstrap is also done this is our account id and um, account id is not shown here for security purpose but um, whatever the, the secret key or access key we have given for that account that particular account uh, it has set up uh, it has bootstrap uh, the environment uh, then finally it will deploy the um, uh, resources so this is done by cdk deploy where it never asked me for approval uh, then after it has um, a kind of uh, post configuration of aws credentials whatever caching um, it has done for credentials it will uh, clean those out uh, and also some kind of temporary files if it has created so this uh, this is also they will delete they will delete the whole environment uh, whatever it has created for me uh, and also after everything is done uh, then the job is uh, completed so we see our uh, initial aws uh, deployment is successful over this account so we will we can go through the cloud formation of this account and uh, check it out uh, like what it actually deployed so if we go cloud formation uh, it will be uh, one stack will be created uh, currently i am in north virginia i will change this to frankfurt region uh, within that uh, frankfurt region i can see that cdk github stack has been created and this github stack create has been completed everything is completed the events uh, that is triggered uh, so this is what I, I was talking about so if 
you don't want to give uh, the role admin privilege you can come here and check the events uh, what it uh, triggers and create the permission one by one from here and we go to resources i don't think it will create anything here only the cdk metadata it has created uh, so uh, nothing fancy right now we have only set up the github actions and it communicated with our aws environment and it sets up the job and it deployed uh, whatever resources it, it is but right now there is no resource so let's go back to our keynote and check it out so um, that create okay nothing to check out because we did not change the code for deployment so in our next step uh, we will open up our repository with uh, PyCharm. I'm using PyCharm. You can use uh, Eclipse or IntelliJ IDEA, whatever you uh, you are familiar with. Mm, uh, then uh, we will change the code and we will uh, write some code to uh, deploy some lambdas and SQS and one S3 bucket maybe. So let's go ahead and do this do this step. So I have opened up this uh, repository uh, with PyCharm and right now i can see i let, let's check the git uh, status once uh, if i have done any thing or not mm, i don't think i have done anything so let's add some code here uh, so let me give you an overview uh, so if you don't uh, understand uh, what is going on with this cdk stack and everything uh, please refer to my earlier video uh, where I have explained uh, how CDK works and how to create one stack set or resources with AWS CDK uh, that will uh, help you a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this particular stack set, you know, if you see, uh, they have only one SQS queue that is also commented out. Uh, but we will uncomment this one and also we will create one bucket, S3 bucket and one AWS Lambda function uh, to deploy our code. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have created uh, three resources. Uh, we have created two resources, and one resources was already there. <laughs> so uh, our SQS queue uh, was already there. We have just uncommented this one. Uh, and for bucket, uh, we have created one bucket, uh, which is called demo bucket beyond the cloud, and this random number. We will block all the public access right now. And for lambda function, we have created one function um, called uh, CDK GitHub demo, uh, which will run on Python um, uh, 3.9. And the code it is taking from uh, lambda code demo, uh, which is this folder. And under this folder, we have demo underscore lambda, this lambda, and uh, under this lambda, um, we have lambda handler. So it will take this code from here and it will uh, create the stack. So very simple, right? So it is only uh, it, it is only creating three resources, one SQS queue, one bucket, and one lambda function. So one important question is that uh, for Lambda, uh, we are not defining any kind of role uh, right now. Mm, if you see here in our stack, we did not define any role uh, for our Lambda. So uh, if you want, uh, you can always create one role for your Lambda. But right now, um, uh, the basic execution uh, role for this Lambda will be there because this Lambda is not doing any kind of um, DynamoDB operation or EC2 operation or S3 operation or anything like that. It is only uh, printing this uh, statement. So for this, uh, it basic execution role uh, is enough for this Lambda. So we are not creating any role. But for in production, uh, you might have to create a separate role for your Lambda. Anyway, uh, so our code is done. And if you remember our uh, GitHub Actions, um, in our GitHub Actions, uh, let me show you once more. Um, in our code of the GitHub Action Plan, uh, that in our plan we currently uh, see that uh, we did not enable this push on master branch. This one we did not enable. So uh, in the previous uh, example, we have uh, triggered the job manually. Right now, what we will do, we will change this one and we will trigger this. Okay, we will do like this. and let's start commit so we commit the changes whenever as soon as we did this one as soon as we have changed this to push on master branch let's go back to our action and check see uh, we have update in main uh, dot yaml and we have pushed directly to the master branch and our pipeline is triggered 
so we have to either, either we can cancel the workflow right now because it will do nothing um, uh, or uh, we can wait for the job to run so basically i will cancel this workflow because i will be pushing the code um, with uh, from my local uh, so let's um, see so we will go back to again here but is it cancelled let me see that so i see the job has been cancelled now yeah uh, right now nothing is running so let let's let, let's go back to our terminal uh, and let's see what has been changed from our master branch so we see that our stack has been changed and one new folder has been created and inside that we have added the code great so what we will do is we will add everything uh, so let me clear the screen and then we will add every file there and we will commit so our code has been committed now clear one more time okay after clearing the screen uh, we will do git push uh, so we have added the files we have committed our code and we will now push it okay so it seems that push uh, worked so let's go back to our console uh, our github repository and let's check uh, so this is done uh, what we will go ahead and check the action plan uh, it is showing that the action currently is running this job is currently running uh, so let's check it out uh, this aws cdk has been triggered so i see our uh, job has been completed uh, and let's go and check one by one what it did mm, so uh, it set up the job then it check out the uh, latest action plan and then it configured the aws credentials mm, uh, this is already similar to the one uh, previously uh, what i wanted to show you is that uh, cdk synth uh, so if we open cdk synth we see now uh, that under resources there are new type of resources that sqs queue will be created s3 bucket will be created and lambda function will be created so this is our cdk uh, cdk synth uh, has been done and after cdk synth it bootstrap the environment uh, so this is not required so if we have bootstrapped one time we can remove this step anyway and it deployed so we go back to our aws console and let's check out the cloud formation uh, stack what it did and within that cloud formation stack under resources we see now couple of more resources has been created wow we see that our sqs queue has been created uh, let's do one more thing here this one we can remove and this one yeah now it's uh, now it's uh, good so we have our aws lambda function has been created uh, iam role has been created related to the stack and then s3 bucket has been created uh, if we go to individual resources uh, we go to lambda we open up our lambda in the meantime we can open up s3 and in the meantime we can open up sqs so uh, in our lambda console we see that github cdk github demo has been created and this has this the code base that we have uh, written uh, we can also test our function uh, we will create one test event and save it and we will trigger the test and it is returning one 200 with the body and content type uh, the one that we have given uh, if we go back to our s3 console uh, we see that our demo bucket has been created uh, if we go to properties uh, we see that the bucket versioning has been enabled and also uh, if we go to permission we see that block all public access currently on also if we go to the sqs queue uh, currently uh, we did not give any queue name so that's why cdk has generated one mm, randomized name here uh, but, it's all, uh, but it, uh, it's always good uh, to have a mm, good a proper name for every resources uh, so we can see anyway uh, the resource has been uh, the queue has been created so now uh, we go back to our keynote and check what has been done so change code for deployment done uh, push the code we have pushed the code from you know, locally uh, and it is also done uh, we have see that we have seen that the github actions can be done manually we have also seen that and also we have uh, as soon as we have pushed the code uh, we saw that the github actions uh, automatically triggered uh, now the last part is uh, pending which is destroying the resources uh, to destroy the resources uh, what uh, we will do is uh, from here itself 
what we can do uh, is we go back to our uh, github action plan and in inside this uh, inside our repository uh, we have our workflow uh, let's open the workflow and what we will do we will edit the workflow here itself without pulling uh, pulling it you can pull the code in your local as well if you want uh, i will do it here uh, to be to do it very easily uh, so i will uncomment this to this three line here what it will do it will destroy the created resources by aws cdk forcefully so the command is cdk destroy but if you want to do it forcefully you need to give minus minus force mm, uh, you can do it interactively as well you can just uh, grab uh, or echo y and then pass the y to this uh, cdk destroy command that also we can do but we are keeping it very simple uh, we will forcefully remove this one so as soon as I start committing this one, you will see that our action plan has been uh, triggered again. So I will commit this message now. So our message is committed and this three line is there. What we will do is we will go to action and we check that uh, this trigger has been completed and this triggered our action plan again. AWS CDK job is running. So now you see that it has it has one more steps called cdk destroy so it will be the all the resources uh, will be destroyed so i don't think anything will be deployed because we did not uh, created any new resources but it will be destroyed so let's see so we can see our job has been completed uh, we see that uh, one new step cdk destroy is there and it destroyed all the resources uh, that it created Let's go back to our stack and let's see uh, what happened. If the stack is still there or not. Oh wow, the stack is already gone. And we don't see any kind of, uh, only the CDK toolkit is there. Uh, let's see if our Lambda is there or not. So we go to functions. Uh, so only one function is there. So this is from another one. Uh, so that function is deleted. And I, I hope the bucket will be there because the bucket deletion takes some time. Yes, the bucket will be there, but it has already been marked for deletion. Um, and in our queue, uh, if we refresh this one, we see there is uh, no, there are no queues. So uh, we all, we saw that um, uh, we have created one CDK project, um, which has been developed in Python. And then we have created a GitHub repository. And from that repository, uh, we have created one action plan uh, which will deploy the CDK resources into AWS account. Now, uh, the whole process is completed and we go back to here, uh, our keynote, and we do this check. Our de de destroyed resources also is done. So that's all from this video. I hope this video was informative for you and you find this helpful in your daily job. Uh, I am excited about my next video where we will be deploying uh, AWS resources with AWS CDK and AWS code pipeline uh, with code build project. So the end to end process will be within AWS itself. Uh, in the end, uh, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Uh, as my channel is very new, uh, please support me by subscribing and giving me feedback. Uh, let me know on what part I can improve or on which topic uh, you want to view uh, more videos. Uh, I will come back with another exciting video. Uh, till then, bye-bye and take care. Mm.